Okay, welcome to the first lecture in, uh, no, to the first lecture on inverse problems in the winter semester of 2020-2021. And, uh, well, probably many of you will be very much surprised that this is actually the first lecture in the new master program, which is in English. So, uh, this lecture is going to be mostly in English. Um, I'm going to give you some information on what we plan and whether this will really be in English or whether we will be doing a soft start, a slow start into the new master program by mixing German and English contents in the beginning. But uh, we'll see. So, welcome. And uh, this is actually not much more than an equipment test uh, around one week before we actually start the lecture. I usually test the equipment and this is part of the test. Okay, uh, the lecture will contain live elements. Uh, these live elements will be lectures which I will give directly from the Institute. Hopefully that will be possible all semester. You will not be able to attend in the Institute, but um, well, we'll, you'll be able to attend these lectures via Zoom. Um, I had the hope that uh, we would be so few participants that we would be able to actually do this in a seminar room uh, in the university, in a small lecture hall in the university. But uh, probably this will not be the case. So uh, definitely these live elements will have to be executed via Zoom and the Zoom links you find in the Learn Web. The same is true probably for the exercises. Also, these will be held uh, online, live via Zoom. And uh, yeah. I mean, you're probably used to it already now, so I don't have to take uh, to talk too much about this. Okay, so uh, the name of this lecture is not, as I wrote down here, Inverse Probleme, but the true and correct name is, and this is another test, the true name is Inverse Problems. Now, what is an inverse problem? Um, it turns out, first of all, that the name of this lecture is actually the wrong one. Inverse problems is a term that comes from physics and that only can uh, be interpreted using physics. The true mathematical name would actually be ill-posed or improperly posed problems, which in Germany would be schlecht gestellte Probleme oder auch incorrect gestellte Probleme. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means uh, in very broad terms um, and I'll just give you a very, very rough idea. And um, I will do a second introduction to the lecture, uh, which I will then do from the Institute and there I will test the Institute's Obviously, as you can see, this is my home office. So take a look around and uh, you will get used to it because I will be taping all the offline content here from this office. Okay, uh, so what is an inverse problem? Well, the answer always goes with the opposite. What is a direct problem or forward problem? And uh, the easiest way uh, of explaining that is take a look at weather prediction. I mean, what does weather prediction do? It takes the weather of today and predicts the weather of tomorrow. So what we have is an operator that maps the weather. This is thought to be a cloud. And the sun, maybe it's raining. And it takes the current weather of today, of now, and maps it maybe to the weather of tomorrow. So this is an operator, and that operator is obviously well-defined. No matter what the weather is today, there will be a weather tomorrow. 
also that weather will be unique. So that operator is in fact well defined. So we have, in a way, it's injective. Uh, is, uh, is the operator is well defined in the sense that a solution exists. And that solution is unique. Okay, that is very nice, but it uh, has another property which is very, very important. Um, that um, mapping or that operator is also in a way continuous or stable, which means that um, if I have a small error in the measurements of the weather of today, I expect there will also be a small, um, a small change, a small error in the weather, in the prediction of the weather for tomorrow. So if I change the weather of today a little bit, then I expect there will also be only a very little bit um, change in the weather of tomorrow. That's the underlying assumption when we do weather prediction, because we will never be able to measure today's weather without any error. So there will be natural errors, but nevertheless, we believe that these errors are small enough that the prediction based on that, uh, on these wrong measurements will still be a good approximation of the weather of tomorrow. So in fact, that means the operator is stable or at least continuous. And this is going to be up to continuous and uh, in a way it is stable. Small errors in uh, the description of the current weather will lead to small errors in the prediction. I mean, I'm not talking about the operator itself, right? I mean, uh, we all know that weather prediction isn't perfect. But um, at least what we have as weather prediction, it, uh, um, it, has these op uh, it has these properties continuous and stable. Now, let us go to a slightly different problem. We take the weather of tomorrow. Oops. We take the weather of tomorrow and... So now I realize why I do these tests. And uh, the reason is I've been talking for 15 more minutes, but nothing of this was actually recorded. So I will just do it again. And uh, I'm glad that this doesn't happen with the real lecture. So where were we? And uh, I hope I can somehow go back to this. Um, um, I will now take the uh, prescribed version of what I have here already. So uh, uh, I will go back to this in a second. Okay, uh, what did we say? We said a, uh, a forward problem or direct problem is something that happens in nature in one way. So it's forward in time, for example, like in the weather uh, prediction problem. The uh, underlying operator, the mathematical operator, has the following properties. It's well defined. That means the solution exists, the solution is uh, unique, and that operator is usually continuous, where we will have, of course, to mathematically define what continuous in this case actually means. Okay, these uh, operators are called direct or forward for obvious reasons, right? They are physically forward. Now let's go to a slightly different problem and let's assume that taking the weather of tomorrow, we want to find out what was the weather to today. So we're going reverse in time, we're going back in time, I give you the weather of tomorrow and you, are, you have the task of finding out what the weather was today. Um, obviously that's backward in a way, it's in reverse time, we're going back in time, and this is a prototype for an inverse problem. Okay, that's the physical meaning. Now, um, 
what are the mathematical properties? Well, more or less, we lose everything that we had above. Now, how about well-defined? Well, it's not completely sure that there is a solution. I give you some weather of tomorrow. Uh, it's not clear that there was a weather today, that there is a weather of today that actually produces that weather of tomorrow. I mean, if it's a real measurement, you, of course, do know there must have been some weather today. But take into account there were measurement errors. So you will never be able to give the weather of tomorrow exactly. So it's mathematically unknown and physically unknown whether there is a corresponding weather of today that produces this uh, error-prone uh, weather of tomorrow. Okay, so it's not completely sure that we can produce the weather of today that gives an arbitrary uh, weather of tomorrow. So existence of solution isn't clear. What about uniqueness? Well, it's absolutely possible that the same, that two different weathers of today will produce exactly the same weather of tomorrow. Might be, right? So uh, also uniqueness isn't clear. And the main thing, and this is what we are mainly going to talk about in this lecture, is that it's also not clear that this is a continuous operator, which would imply that small, uh, which if it is not continuous, if it is discontinuous, then this would imply that small errors in the measurement of the weather of tomorrow would lead to giant errors in the prediction of the weather of today. So um, this is very, very hard. I mean, somehow we believe we might be able to come around problems one and two, solutions and uniqueness, um, uniqueness of solution and existence of solutions. If you go back to numerical linear algebra, even with small finite linear systems, uh, there was the problem that you might have an operator that's not invertible. And there you introduced the terms least squares of uh, solution or um, also more Penrose solution, which could deal with uh, um, matrices that were not invertible in linear equations and which define general solutions and general uniqueness. So we might get, we have the feeling we might get around number one and two, but number three, the discontinuity, that's something that's really bad because that's me, that means that if we have an arbitrarily small error in the measurements, we will get an arbitrarily big error in the result. And uh, this is something we definitely cannot live with. And uh, we will have to do something about this. And this is mainly what we're going to do in this lecture. Let me just add uh, that these three conditions that we came up here with quite naturally, um, a, um, a problem is good or well-posed, as we call it. Uh, if, it uh, if it satisfies the three conditions, a solution exists, the solution is unique, and the operator is stable, which, me which means that the operator from the data to the solution is continuous. If one of these conditions is violated, then we call this operator ill-posed. And uh, this uh, definition was first introduced by Hadamard. Um, and uh, I will give you a little bit more, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what he actually did and uh, um, why he defined it in the following lecture, which will be a little bit more mathematical than this one.